Hello and welcome back. Now, yesterday you were working on percentiles and I wanted to show you a couple things about your graph. You were supposed to do the graph on your own, but when you did it, here's what it should have looked like. So when you do the cumulative percentage graph or the percentile graph, this is what he should be. And once it's constructed, you can find approximate corresponding percentile ranks for your blood pressure values or whatever you have. So in other words, I can say, like for example, 40%, to be in the 40th percentile with my blood pressure, which means that um, my blood pressure is higher than 40% of the people, I would go over and down and look at what, uh, what X value corresponded with that. So in this case, the 40th percentile corresponds to approximately 118. I can also say, okay, my blood pressure is 140, or 130, and what would the, be my percentile rank with respect to everybody else? So I would go up from 130 here, whoop, and then go over to the left, and see that that hits about at 70 percentile. So that's how you can use your percentile graphs. They do that when they, you know, they don't calculate your percentiles uh, when you go into the doctor's office. They just use those graphs to make those correlations. Now, if you wanted to find a percentile of a data value, you're going to be using a formula. So all you have to be able to do is use this formula. Number of values below X plus 0.5 over the total number of values times 100. Bada boom, bada bing, let's get into the example. Very easy to do. Like most things in these statistics class, you just have to uh, know the formula and how to use it. So first step here is going to be to arrange the data in lowest to highest. A uh, teacher gives a 20 points test to 10 students. Scores are shown. Find the percentile rank of 12. This is how they do your ACT tests and that kind of stuff. So here's all the scores of the data. We arranged them from low to high. Substitute it in the formula. So you again, you just have to know a couple things. Number of values below the desired data value and how many number of values you have. So how many values you have here. So number of data values below X. In this case, 12 is our data value. It's one of the scores. How many we have below there is 6. Total number of values is 10. So there's 6 values below 12. And we'll just plug it right in there. 6 plus 0.5, divide that whole thing by 10 times 100, and you get 65. So it's a 65th percentile. This is saying that a student with a score of 12 did better than 65% of his class or her class. So this next one, I want to see if you can use that formula. You can go back to the one we just did and go through that um, those step-by-step -step process, but it's pretty simple. I want you to try to do it on your own in your notes, and I will check it in class tomorrow. Now, if you're trying to go backwards and say, I'm in the 60th percentile, what score would I have to get to be in the 60th percentile? This is this formula. C is going to be a locator uh, that gives a position of a value. Now, C is going to be either be a whole number or a decimal number, and we're going to have a couple different processes to do, but don't worry. We're going to go through a couple examples here to show you both case scenarios. So finding the value corresponding to a given percentile. Use the scores that we just used and find the value corresponding to the 25th percentile. So let's rock and roll on this. First thing to do, sort the data from low to high. Second step, you're going to find your locator, your C. It's going to be in this formula, n times p over 100. n is the total number of values, and p is your percentile. 25 is going to go in for the p, 10 is going to go in for the n, and bada boom, bada bing, it'll crank it right out there. 10 times 25 over 100 gives me 2.5. In this case, my locator c is not a whole number. So what you do if it's not a whole number is you round it up to the next whole number, in this case will be 3, and then all you have to do is count from the lowest value over 3. So this is first, second, third value. And so 5 is your third value, and 5 corresponds to the 25th percentile. That's it. Let's look at an example where C is Let's look at an example where C is a whole number. Now you'd think, "Hey, it's a whole number. Yay, we like whole numbers." But it gets a little more complicated when C is a whole number. Don't ask me why. Let's just learn how to do it. So use the scores to find the value in the 60th percentile. So sort the data low to high, same start. Find C, n times equals the total number 
of values. P is the percentile. So we're going to have 10 times 60 over, over 100, which gives me 6. So since C is a whole number, what you do is you use the, halfway, the value halfway between C and C plus 1. C is 6, so we're going to be using 6 and C plus 1 would be 7. 6 plus 1 is 7. So we're going to be using the value between the 6th and 7th value. There's my 6th value, that's the 10. 7th value is the 12. We need the value halfway in between there. In order to find that, we do 10 plus 12 divided by 2. That case is 11. We found it by 10 plus 12 divided by 2, halfway between. So that's what you do if C is a whole number. Let's look at a, a flow chart here just so that we don't get confused about it. Right here, you start out, you sort your data. That's your first step. Then you substitute the values into the formula C equals N times P over 100. This gives you the location of that percentile data piece in your data. Then you ask yourself, is C a whole number? If it is yes, if C is a whole number, what you do is you use the value halfway between the C value and the C plus 1 value. If it is not a whole number, that one's actually easier. You round up to the next whole number and starting at the lowest value, count over to the number that corresponds to the rounded up value. Alright, that's it for these notes and I will see you tomorrow.